Rockstar Games had only explored relatively rudimentary modes of multiplayer in its games before the advent of Red Dead Redemption in 2010. The American West set adventure with its cooperative and competitive offerings engendered the development studio's first step into the Wild West of expansive online gameplay. It made sense then that Grand Theft Auto V's multiplayer suite, GTA Online, allowed the team to unfurl its wings and do so in a way that generated multi-million dollar earnings via in-game purchasing. But GTA Online didn't achieve incredible success overnight. Several years and various post-launch updates would land before the experience hit its stride with 2015's Heists update. The hope was that Rockstar would afford Red Dead Redemption 2's online component the same room to grow. Red Dead Online entered beta weeks after the prequel story campaign arrived in stores. It almost instantly became mired in controversy too, mostly because of balancing issues with the in-game economy. Rockstar addressed the community's concerns with haste, leading many to believe the move marked the start of a cadence that would always see the developer quickly respond to player feedback. This rapport between the production team and its Red Dead Online user base lasted for only so long, however. A frustrated community felt the need to beg for meaningful content updates within two years of the multiplayer mode's release, and after about three years, pleas for Rockstar to save Red Dead Online had turned into a trending hashtag that even caught the attention of executives at Red Dead publisher Take-Two Interactive. Unfortunately, these noble efforts proved for naught, since once again the future of the western theme franchise found itself playing second fiddle to the creation of new Grand Theft Auto content. This is the tragedy of Red Dead Online. Ever wanted to play with a friend whose game is region locked to a server in a different country? Surfshark allows you to both do this and protect your data in the process. Surfshark is the ultimate VPN solution for gamers around the globe. Not only will Surfshark let you know as soon as your data has been leaked somewhere online, it will also notify you to change your passwords to prevent further breaches. With secure and fast protocols and powerful encryption to secure your browsing habits, Surfshark will ensure your data and online behavior stays private from anyone trying to access it. So waste no time. Get Surfshark for 83% off when using our link and promo code GVMERS, in addition to three months for free when subscribing to a 24-month plan. And with Surfshark's 30-day money-back guarantee, you'll be able to test their service entirely risk-free. We'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Given Red Dead Redemption 2's expansive single-player campaign, Rockstar Games thought it prudent to spread out the launch of its online component. According to Rockstar North design director Imran Sawar, the team wanted to ensure players had plenty of time to see Arthur Morgan's story through to completion before diving into a multiplayer adventure. Thus, the Red Dead Online beta enjoyed a staggered release across four days, starting on November 27, 2018, one month after Red Dead 2's late October arrival. The gradual rollout also served to mitigate potential technical issues. However, the studio seemingly failed to anticipate the scrutiny it would come under when early adopters closely analyzed in-game purchasing options. GTA Online thrusted newcomers onto the path of becoming millionaires right off the bat providing the ultimate fantasy fulfillment in an open-world metropolis. In turn, the rewards for completing missions totaled thousands or even millions of in-game dollars. Red Dead Online allowed for no such wish fulfillment because of its Wild West setting. Store items were priced at no more than a few bucks, reflecting late 19th century pricing. Players received meager payouts for finishing activities as a result. This cash-based currency proved troublesome from the outset. Yet the premium gold bars currency, intended for special cosmetics and faster item unlocks, garnered most of the community's ire during the early beta phase. Notably, gold bars demanded an arduous grind. One Redditor calculated the average player would need to devote approximately eight hours of their time to obtain a single gold bar. The problem was nestled in the fact that several items, better horse breeds included, could only be purchased with gold bars. Fully modifying a rifle cost up to 30 gold bars, for example. 
Red Dead Online's unbalanced economy didn't constitute a pay-to-win issue per se, but users expressed concern over it potentially facilitating a situation whereby those incentivized to engage in microtransactions for faster unlocks could gain an unfair advantage. As such, despite generally positive first impressions, the beta represented the first instance of a community-driven grassroots campaign to save RDR2 online. The campaign primarily centered on publicizing the proper Rockstar-run channels through which users could submit feedback. Such a coordinated effort worked to some extent, given the studio's speedy development of a patch to rebalance the economy system. The microtransactions debacle aside, many had high hopes for the future of Red Dead Online ahead of its official launch in May 2019. And much of that optimism stemmed from developer promises, assurances consisting of constant updates and adjustments to grow and evolve the experience. The co-studio head of Rockstar North, Rob Nelson, reiterated this notion months after the beta ended, telling readers of official Xbox magazine the future is full of surprises, while insisting that remaining mindful of community feedback would serve as the primary goal. Statements of this nature weren't made in a vacuum. Rockstar understood it would take time for Red Dead Online to find a comfortable rhythm, especially since lead developers recognized that GTA Online only began to reach the extent of its capabilities when the Heist update touched down in 2015. However, Nelson and the San Diego team senior producer Josh Needleman both expected Red Dead to achieve high levels of success at a quicker pace. In pursuit of such ends, the company hoped to stagger GTA and Red Dead content updates, following a nebulous release schedule that would encourage players to switch back and forth between the two. Needleman admitted in an IGN interview that production plans would likely stymie this even-handed approach. But Red Dead Faithful could not have predicted just how much favor Grand Theft Auto would gain long term. Red Dead Online's beta phase concluded in May 2019 bringing about the multiplayer suite's complete release and a massive update. The patch included an assortment of new Land of Opportunity story missions, whose content proved contingent on which side of the law users occupied. Outlaws joined up with notorious criminals to commit misdeeds. Meanwhile, those who followed the gunslinger route lent their guns to more worthy causes, such as chasing down a gang in Valentine. Free roam missions, extra posse versus contests, and the Overrun Showdown mode filled out the substantially sizable update too. Rockstar also introduced offensive and defensive playstyles, respectively. Tailor-made experiences targeting users who enjoyed PvP or wished to avoid battling fellow players. Myriad gameplay improvements and a hostility system to mitigate griefing additionally served as integral parts of Red Dead Online's first major update. On the back of this release, the crew at Rockstar set to work on further embracing Red Dead 2's role-playing mechanics. Rob Nelson claimed this approach was, in part, inspired by three key elements that beta users openly voiced an interest in. A more personal connection to their player-created character, improved balancing, and ponchos. In September 2019, then, the studio unleashed three new frontier pursuits specialist roles in the form of bounty hunters, collectors, and traders. The bounty hunter path revolved around tracking wanted criminals. The collector role emphasized exploration and treasure hunting. And the trader's option boasted an entrepreneurial bent for business-minded folks. Red Dead Online's earliest outlaw pass, the equivalent of a battle pass, entered the mix to boot, packing in a free version with fewer rewards and a premium offering worth 35 gold bars. At the time, it all seemed a solid start, with Rockstar touting the introduction of roles as a fundamental change to the title's long-term future. Better still, legendary bounties followed not too long thereafter, turning some of Red Dead's most formidable outlaws into targets for players to hunt down and capture, dead or alive. Subsequent months, by and large, proved a mixed bag, filled with hope, anticipation, and few high marks as far as the community was concerned. Some of the most exciting discourse spawned from supposed in-game zombie sightings, which sparked speculation about a possible sequel to the original game's Undead Nightmare expansion. When nothing came of these findings, Red Dead players concluded the zombies were dead bodies glitched into standing upright at inopportune times. In addition to launching Red Dead 2 on PC and Google Stadia, Rockstar closed out the year on a relatively high note, 
The Moonshiners role joined the multiplayer mode as a frontier pursuit in December 2019, inviting traders to invest in the bootlegging business. Outlaw Pass No. 2 also launched alongside the Moonshiners content, as did new clothes and an increased number of inventory slots for the wardrobe. In hindsight, many would later reflect on this point as the end of a rather fleeting era in Red Dead Online history. By January 2020, the PC version of Red Dead's multiplayer had become inundated with hackers harassing players or instigating the banning of innocent users. This issue didn't impact the community at large, but further accentuated Rockstar's failure to solve the cheating problem that had plagued GTA Online for years. And if GTA hadn't received a proper fix, Red Dead players on PC were more or less out of luck. On top of hacking and cheating concerns, the Red Dead Online user base had also resigned itself to accepting a drought of meaningful content updates in early 2020. The frustration bubbled to a boil in mid-July, seven months after the Moonshiners content dropped. Some players let off steam in-game by participating in a fashion competition organized by the game's Discord and Reddit communities. In June, a similar competition gained quite a bit of popularity for its Saint Denis theme. The fan-run event in July, however, boasted a traveling circus theme, a way for players to protest the lack of regular updates. As PC Games N noted, one Discord mod reasoned players were all clowns for believing they'd receive fresh content, so it was fitting to dress the part, too. To the delight of many, Rockstar did deliver a substantial update later in July, unleashing the naturalist as an all-new frontier pursuit. This particular role focused on tracking legendary animals, as naturalist players could work alongside Harriet Davenport to research and conserve the lives of rare animals. An alternate naturalist path let users lend their services to big game hunter Gus McMillan, who paid top dollar for rare animal pelts and could fashion unique clothing items from the retrieved skins. On top of seven legendary animals, the update's other supplemental add-ons included new skills for naturalists, free roam events, another outlaw pass, and asynchronous matchmaking. The naturalist role provided fun gameplay opportunities not afforded to the classes that came before. Its associated weapons and cosmetics received their fair share of praise too, but the positivity injected into the community by the update in question wouldn't last for very long. Well, these things happen, Lee. In fact, they happen more often than we like to admit. Players regarded Rockstar's major release for Red Dead Online as nothing but a morsel, given the contents of the Bounty Hunter update that launched in December 2020. As opposed to phasing in a new playable class, the late 2020 update expanded upon the Bounty Hunter role by adding 10 prestigious bounty levels to the role's existing progression model. These extra levels were combined with new cosmetics and higher-paying bounties to form the prestigious Bounty Hunter license. Priced at 15 gold bars, the Bounty Hunter unlocks cost over half the price of the Moonshiner and Naturalist roles, both of which featured more content. Users understandably took umbrage with the state of things, feeling exacerbated by the fourth Premium Outlaw Pass only offering 30 gold bars compared to the typical 40. Notably, purchasing the pass in its first week of availability unlocked access to an additional 10 gold bars and 400 in-game dollars. The community accused Rockstar of employing this tactic to target people's fear of missing out. That the Outlaw Pass primarily contained filler items and no weapon skins or outfit unlocks for level 1 progression intensified the dismay. In short, Red Dead Online's answer to the Battle Pass had become underwhelming, and changes to gold payouts for the daily challenges made playing the game for free far less efficient than in previous updates. Suffice it to say, some Red Dead regulars viewed the Bounty Hunter license as the last straw. Hope lingered in some respect, though, courtesy of a standalone Red Dead Online release for consoles and PC. The standalone hit digital stores on the same day as the Bounty Hunter expansion for $5, a 75% discount that remained in place through February 2021. From the outside, looking in, a dedicated Red Dead Online platform separate from the story mode suggested the multiplayer suite still had life left in it. Yet, as subsequent months wore on, doubt once more pervaded the game's slowly dwindling community. Red Dead Online spent the first half of 2021 drifting through yet another content drought, barring weekly challenges and small patches. 
As it had the previous year, the month of July bore fruit with the advent of Blood Money, an update centered on the San Denis locale. Built around multi-stage robbery missions, Blood Money tasked players with accepting jobs from crime boss Guido Martelli, who needed gunslingers to acquire valuable currency known as Capitale. The currency originally came into existence as a unique exchange system for criminal business dealings. Thus, attempts to successfully retrieve Capitale presented players with lucrative criminal opportunities, which manifested as a new mission type, crimes. Objectives attached to crimes ranged from elaborate robberies and stagecoach holdups to kidnappings and debt collection. The player's job didn't end there either, as accumulating Capitale led to opportunities, schemes devised by Martelli to bring down a senator hell-bent on disrupting criminal operations in San Denis. Rockstar deployed the first of three opportunities on July 13th, with the second and third opportunities arriving less than a month later. Despite opportunities acting as the equivalent of GTA Online's heists, opinions about the content from the community were divisive at best. One side of the aisle considered the missions a waste of time, the other enjoyed the storytelling and argued that, at the very least, opportunities provided a great jumping on point for newcomers. Above all else, veteran players wanted in-game luxuries to spend their growing riches on. PC modders solved the problem to a degree with the creation of purchasable property mods. But users across all platforms longed for more, much more than Rockstar was willing to produce. In December 2021, GTA Online received a massive update featuring new music from Dr. Dre, a story starring the music legend himself, and the return of GTA V protagonist, Franklin Clinton. While GTA players debated whether such an expansion should have launched as single-player DLC, Red Dead's online component received nothing in the way of a significant content drop. Rockstar's favoritism towards GTA admittedly made sense, given that a NetBet study from August 2021 estimated GTA Online's earnings totaled a whopping $2.5 million per day. Nevertheless, players expected Rockstar to set aside resources for Red Dead support too. When it became evident the studio had no such plan in mind, the community started a Save Red Dead Online campaign in January 2022 with a hashtag that trended on Twitter. The outcry went more or less unanswered until Strauss Selnick, CEO of Take-Two Interactive, told IGN in May that though he was aware of player frustrations, the future of content updates depended on Rockstar's decision-making. Unfortunately, the final decision, the final blow, came in July when the studio revealed it had begun shifting resources to production for the next Grand Theft Auto game. Red Dead Online support would be relegated to seasonal events, expanding upon existing modes and the addition of new Telegram missions later in 2022, rather than delivering major themed content updates. The news circulated mere days after Red Dead Online community members announced an in-game funeral to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the title's abandonment it seemed active users had long spied the writing on the wall. Therein lies the tragedy of Red Dead Online. Players wanted a better game, campaigned for it, but had to accept far too early in its life cycle that middling developer support made even the simplest of requests an impossibility. Considering the departure of the franchise's lead writer, Dan Hauser, in March 2020, and reports of a canceled remaster for the original game, Fans can only hope a similar tragedy won't befall Red Dead proper. Thank you for watching. We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier. Alex Moretti and those currently subscribed to our producer reward tier. Brock Piviroto, Darirap Sigurdsson, GetWrecked.com, Kira May, Landy K. Hayes, Mario Herrera, Milkshake. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and backing us on Patreon.